you join us today at a very, very nice fishery that's very close to where I live. This is Sherwood Forest Farm Fishery. It's a fishery that I really like fishing here. I don't get much chance to, to, to fish here and I've only probably fished probably one or two matches here. One of them was filmed for the Matrix YouTube channel right here on this lake where I even did a spot of pole fishing. It was filmed as a live match and if you'd like to check that out, there is a link in the description box below for you to watch that at your will. However, we're here today. We're back in May. It's still very much springtime. The water is still a little bit cold. The fish are showing signs of about to start spawning. So at this time of year, this is when we can often find that we have to change the way that we fish and the way that we feed a little bit. We're going to be fishing with an open method feeder today. That's all it's about. However, we're going to be experimenting between pellets and ground bait. At this time of year, they might not be quite as hungry as they are through the summer months, and that's when a ground bait option can often be the way to go. So, I'm just about set up. All I need to do now is mix up some bait, which I'll walk you through. I'll show you how we prepare the bait, and I can't wait to get fishing this fantastic lake. We all know how simple the method feeder can be, but there are certain things when you're method feeder fishing that need to be right, you know? Once you cast that feeder out there, the rest of it is really up to the fish for it to hook itself. And obviously the way that your ground bait breaks down, the way that your pellets break down, all that will determine how ultimately your, your rig is working, you know? So this bit needs to be right, and it's amazing how many people don't quite put enough attention to it. So for me, obviously you could prepare your bait the night before, lots and lots of people do that. But for me, because I fish so many different venues, it can be quite difficult to, to, to have an idea of what kind of baits you're going to need until you actually draw your peg. You know, so on some fisheries you might be on different lakes and different lakes might require different ground baits, they might require different sorts of pellets and all that sort of thing. So for me, when I'm going to a venue like this, when you don't always know what, where you're going to be, um, what kind of peg you're going to be faced with, I like to prepare my bait as soon as I get to my peg. It's the first job that I do. So just like many other fisheries, You've got to use fishery pellets here. You haven't got to use pellets, but if you're going to use pellets, they need to be fishery pellets. So the first thing I would do is soak down some micro pellets. So we're not going to need too many. It's amazing how far even just a pint of pellets will go. Just pour some into a large bait tub like that. No fancy sieves. I don't use anything like that. We've got lake water. Just cover the pellets with your lake water. And this is the first thing that I do as soon as I get to my peg. And now, lots of people ask about how long they should leave pellets to soak. Unfortunately, certainly in my experience, I've spent a lot of time over the last 12 months fishing with the method feeder on lots of different commercial fisheries. And personally, I cannot tell you exactly the amount of time to soak your pellets for, for each pellet. And that's because lots of pellets are different. Different fisheries have got different sorts of pellets. So that will have an impact about how long you should ultimately soak them. And the other thing as well is the water tem temperature will make a difference as well. In winter, the water's colder and so they will take longer to soak whereas in summer the water temperature is warmer so you don't need to soak them quite as long so if you're ever in two minds or you're ever a little bit unsure the best thing i can say to you is just give them a couple of minutes if you're unsure give them two minutes drain the water off and then you can always add more water to them if they're a little bit too dry by doing it that way it just means that you're not going to take a chance over soak them and then you've ruined them. You've got to throw them away and then start again. Obviously that's going to cost you more money and it's very frustrating. So I will just literally give them a couple of minutes. I will drain the water off and that should, I'm guessing, should be okay. If not, then obviously I can always add more water to the pellets as I'm fishing or before the session starts. So once these have been soaked, obviously they should start to go nice and soft. They're still going to take about another 20 minutes or so before they're going to be anywhere near right but that's why you do this as soon as you get to your peg and once you're happy that they've been soaked what i then do is drain the water off all right so i don't tip that into the lake and i drain it into another tub and i'll explain why i do that in a moment get all that water off i'm not concerned about these pellets if they haven't had long enough to soak it's not an issue i can add water to them again in 20 minutes or so and get just to make sure that they're absolutely right so there your pellets they're all soaked okay i could put them to one side and forget about them for half an hour i've then got pellet water now we go out and spend lots of money on glugs on on flavorings to to flavor water to flavor your pellets to flavor your ground bait that's exactly what that is and more importantly 
the flavour of the pellet that's in there is actually the fishery pellets of the fishery that you're actually fishing. So that is the water that I will then use to mix the ground bait. So now we've got the water which is loaded with that pellet juice. I'm just going to pop that into another tub. So I'm going to use that to mix the ground bait. And what we've got here is a 1.1 pint tub. One of the things that we're always talking about is saving money where we can and just not wasting bait. That is why I measure out all my ground bait. It's just a great way of, of, of obviously knowing how much ground bait you're using, but it means you're not wasting it as well. So I always measure out my ground bait. But before we start doing that, I just want to quickly tell you about my ground bait choice. There are lots and lots of different styles of fisheries out there. The lake behind me, as you can see, it's got quite a bit of colour in it, but certainly through winter, through springtime, we tend to still use mixers that haven't got too much feed in them. Anything, best bit of advice I can give you is anything with the F1 name on there generally means it's a finer mix. It's generally not got quite as much food, food in there, and quite often it's a darker mix as well. So if you're having two minds about a fishery, particularly if you think it might be fishing hard, we, we generally go down a darker mix ground bait. This one's not got much food in it, because what you've got to remember is you're going to be putting this around your feeder. The last thing that I really want is for fish to be out there eating this ground bait. You know, we want it to attract them. We want it to hopefully hold a few fish there, but if they are going to be so preoccupied eating particles and bits of food that's in here, then that's great if it's holding them in the peg, but you can't put those particles on your hook. You know, I just want to attract the fish to the feeder. Then when the fish gets to the feeder, hopefully, depending on how many pellets you've got around your feeder, the only thing that's going to be there that's going to stand out is going to be your hook bait, because that's the difference between feeding fish and catching fish, if that makes a difference. So that's the mix that I'm going to be using today. I'm going to measure it out, and all I'm going to use is one pint. This is a 1.1 pint tub. There are lots of tubs like this out there. It doesn't matter what you use, but don't forget that when you mix this with water, it's going to almost double in its quantity, all right, or in its volume. So I'm going to pop that into a nice big bowl there, and then I've got my nice pellet water there, pellet flavoured water that I'm going to tip in there. And just add, as always, as we're always talking about, little and often. All right, you don't want to ruin it. It is amazing how much water some of these mixers can take on. But always err on the side of caution if you're not too sure. Now, I'm a fan of over-wetting it slightly at the, before. But even that, that's gone already gone dark. You can see how it's clumping together. That is over wet how it is. But obviously, over the course of the next 15 to 20 minutes, that's going to dry out. I can add a little bit more water to it if I wish. And then once I'm happy with the mix, with the way that it is, I will then pop it through the smallest sieve that we've got, which is four mil, pop it through that just to get rid of any of those lumps in there that have taken on more water than the rest. And that should be ready to go by the time I'm ready to fish. That's why you need to be doing all this prep as soon as you get to your pegs so that it's going to be just in tip top condition, ready to fish for the start of your session or your match. We've given this about 20 minutes now, and to be honest, the bait looks about right. I mean, the pellets, they only literally had, as you saw, a couple of minutes. That was actually filmed in real time, so you can, that gives you an exact idea of how long they've had. At the moment, they're all right, but obviously, as they, if they dry out, it is windy today, there's the sun. If they dry out, we can just add a little bit more water to them to get them right, so I'm really not worried about those. The ground bait, that looks about right for me. Again, you can add more water to this, obviously, during the session, and all I will then do is simply pop that through this is the smallest sieve that we do, the Matrix one, which is four mil. And all that will basically do is all those lumps there, as you can see, they've just taken on more water than the rest of the ground. Mate. Don't throw those away, you know. We don't want to go throwing bait away when we know we can use it. And I could just push that through the sieve, like so. And then that will leave a nice, even, even mix there, which should be ideal for molding around the feeder. Well, we've found another one. It's unbelievable sometimes how little changes can make such a big difference. This is why we're always guessing with fishing, always. Let's just get this one in the net, hopefully. There we go, we've got him. 
Well, it's just completely transformed it now, to be fair. We kicked off with, I wanted to start a little bit cautious, so we started off with, with ground bait really, mainly ground bait, and just a few micros in there, because I didn't really know what to expect. And, um, and it's been a really slow start. We got one early on, there we go. It's a lovely condition, that one, isn't it? Beautiful fish. Started off with ground bait, mainly ground bait, ratio of about three, three to one, um, in favor of ground bait just to be nice and cautious, didn't want to put too much bait out there. But as you can see, with fish like that, and that was literally only out there a minute and a half, two minutes, that's all. Beautiful fish. And all I've just basically done is, we've switched. We switched from ground bait and pellet, we switched it to just pellet. Like, like we said early on, sometimes, especially this time of year, when fish do start, they want to start feeding, particularly in summer, they want some food, they want some feed. And that looks like that's exactly what's happened happening right now you know we're going to just pellet around the feeder there's quite a lot of bait around there burying the hook bait in there and um, well I mean the change has been pretty much instant method feeder is such a simple way of fishing but obviously all the basics have got to be right and one of the things I love about the method feeders that I use the matrix ones is basically they are all interchangeable with our with our interchangeable system basically so you can constantly change the feeder the size of the feeder the style of the feeder and and you just makes the suit these this sort of a setup really really flexible okay so the actual rig itself couldn't be any simpler. All we basically, I mean, I, I'm not using any sort of shock leaders today. It's just an eight pound Horizon uh, mono line on the reel, and that just goes straight to the rig. Okay, so the first bit that we do is just simply thread on the, the, the cone. So thread that on there. It's a free running rig that we're using. Thread the tube on, or the inner tube. I'll just take that feeder off there for the moment. So you've just got the tube which is threaded on there, obviously it's a free running rig and then all we've then got is the quick change hook lens system there. We thread that first bit on there which obviously is free to run as well and then the next bit, the final bit is the, the, the quick change hook if you want to call it that. That is the hook where you actually attach your hook length. Tie that to the main line and then you can just easily assemble the rig around that. Super, super simple. And because it's free running, that means that it's, you know, it complies with all fishery rules, which, you know, let's face it, it's one of the most common rules on commercial fisheries up and down the country. So that is the rig itself. That's the tube. And that basically means that I can, if I want to use like we are doing today, we can actually use a normal, a standard method feeder. We can thread that on there and fish with a normal method feeder. But at any stage, if I feel I want to change that, I can change it for an open alloy style method feeder as well. That's the one that's got sides on it. So that you've just seen how easy it is to change that. And I can also, if I wish, and just like we often do on commercial fisheries, we can switch that for a bomb. So if you want to go over a loose fed bomb and pellet line or bomb and corn, again, you've got super, super flexibility. You've seen how quick it is to change that. And if you are gonna to come to a venue like this on a session, whether it be a match or just a day's pleasure fishing, you can literally just set one rod up and you've got all these many options. You know, it's super, super flexible. Okay, now what we're actually fishing with today is a four inch hook length. Now, most fisheries do have hook length rules and the vast majority of them are, or they do stipulate that you can't use a hook length shorter than four inch and that's the one that i'm using today as you can see now these are can be difficult to tie up let's face it and more importantly they can be difficult to tie up to get them right as well and that's where our ready tied hook lengths come into play these have just been a game changer it's brilliant you know it really cuts down on our prep and 
you know, these four inch up lengths, they are available with super stops. Okay, so you might want to use those with corn or bread or expandable pellets. There are also the option with bands, which is what we use if you're using a banded pellet, a hard banded pellet. And then finally, we have actually got boiler pins as well, which is probably one of my favorites to use, especially if I'm using wafters and boilers. Simple as that, and they are all already in four inch lengths as well, ready to go. So that makes the method even simpler. So that is the style of feeder that we're gonna be using today. But like I said, we may find that another style is better, but with this sort of a system, you can set one rod up and you can try them all out. That one's on. He's just going for those lilies, I think. I can see him on the top. <laughs> He's come straight to the surface. Had quite a few indications there and I was tempted to uh, have a recast, but I'm glad I left it now. Uh, we've got him under control now. This reel and rod set up perfect for this sort of fishing. I spent all winter fishing with these rods and um, for commercial fishing, method feeder fishing, just nine foot. It's the Ethos XRC. Beautiful rods for this sort of fishing. You know, if you're fishing with a method feeder and if you're fishing with a bomb as well, any, any ranges up to about 40 meters. They're just really, really nice commercial rods. And as you can see, when you do lift your rod up, the fish is very, very close to your finetting which obviously makes playing fish much, much easier. How simple was that? You know, because it's, I mean, it's a nine foot rod, but obviously when you've got a fish on, it's bending. So when you hold it out in front of you, it's not nine feet away from you. It's more like six feet away from you because you've got the bend and that's an ideal range and a nice distance for, for scooping fish nice and quickly, you know? So, um, but it's a lovely setup. And because it's only nine foot, because you're not casting great distances, you can use smaller reels. I love to use smaller compact reels, either a 3000, this is an XR. This is a three and a half thousand, but to be honest, a 3000 reel will probably be a little bit more suited to a nine foot rod. But look at that, that's quite a long fish, that one, isn't it? Beautiful. But you've just seen how quick and easy it was to, to get that fish under control and how quickly, you know, we netted it within a minute. And that could be a great way of, of building up weight big weights in summer, you know, by being able to play fish, play fish on, on, on tattle that is matched to the, to the fish that you're catching. And um, when you can net them as quickly as that, then when you do get on one of those red letter days or when you get a few fish lined up, obviously you can capitalize and, and land them really, really quickly. Loading the method feeder can be quite simple, but it's got to be right. However, there are things out there that are going to make that job much, much easier. Obviously, making sure your pellets are the right consistency will help and the ground bait. However, using one of our molds will make it super, super simple and it will make sure that every single, every single feeder full will be exactly the same. It'll be uniform and it'll be in a nice aerodynamic streamlined shape as well, which is going to help your casting. So this is how we load the feeder. What we'll do is the first thing you really need to do is try and make sure that your mold is nice and clean because that's going to help this work better for you. So we just put a small layer of pellets in there first or ground bait if that's what you're using. 
Then we'll lay your hook length in there, make sure it's nice and flat. And then put another layer of pellets over the top, just to the rim of the mold. And then simply press the feeder into the pellets. Give it a nice good squeeze because you want to make sure it's going to bind together but also bind to the actual frame of the feeder itself. Flip the feeder over and these bits here are designed for squeezing. If we squeeze those that will help the mold peel away. Just make sure that your hook length is positioned properly in there so that the loop is there out of the way so it's not going to interfere with any fish coming into that ball of bait and as you can see it's a really nice aerodynamic streamed ball of pellets. Is that the one? Well, I think it's fair to say that for whatever reason, the fish are definitely preferring pellets today. We started on ground bait, all the ground bait and pellet combination, and just to err on the side of caution, you know, the water's still pretty cool. And by doing that and not starting on pellets, you know, you haven't already fed a load of bait because then if it does turn out to be a, a harder day than expected, then you you haven't put loads of bait out there. But today, it's um, as soon as we switch to, to pellets, then that's definitely been the way to go today. So maybe that's a sign that summer is on its way and the fish are wanting to feed. It's a lovely positive way of fishing. This is, that sounded much bigger than it seemed, the way I'm playing it, the way it broke the surface then. This setup's just perfect for playing these fish. It's a really nice, nice way of fishing. We've got eight pound horizon mono on the reel. No fancy shock leaders or anything like that. It's just a really nice balanced way of fishing. And when you do switch to pellets, like what we have done, if you do suddenly think you need that attraction of ground bait, there we go. How easy was that to net with a lovely short rod like that, you know? And again, it, we've landed it in a, in a minute or so. That's a bigger fish. He's fighting still now, even though he's in the net. But even if you feel you need, you want to put some ground bait in again, just for that attraction, you could just quickly have a couple of casts with ground bait, you know, and you can, and we haven't really done it today, is fish just with ground bait. You know, I've got a, a combination there of probably three parts ground bait to one of pellet. You could just cut, cut out all the feed altogether and just have just ground bait around the feeder. And you can have a combination as well of pellet and ground bait. So you could put pellets on first and then ground bait on the top. There's all sorts of little combinations that you can try anything and when every fish is that sort of size even in just any one of those little changes just triggers you one more bite then that's how you can catch your extra fish especially on those harder days he's a lovely fish that one Well, it's been a really interesting session. At this time of year, you've got to expect to make a few changes. As you can see, when you're catching fish like this, by making those little changes, 
even if just one of those works it's going to get you an extra fish which can be so so important at this time of year so keep thinking outside the box experiment between pellets and ground bait and this can be your reward even when it's still a little bit chilly we really hope you've picked up some tips and tricks from this video and we really look forward to seeing you next time